1981, Specialized became a mountain bike brand when it released the Stump Jumper. Fast forward to the end of the decade, and the Stump Jumper was still the top of the line model. The Stump Jumper Comp was available in two colorways white with gold pearl and black with purple pearl. It was built using triple butted chromoly steel tubing. This frame right here is in exceptionally good condition. The only blemish worth noting is the one on the head tube decal. It originally came with a silver headset and seat post clamp that we replaced because we are going for an all black build. Welcome back to Botantino Bicycles. Today we have something really special. We're building up a 1989 Stump Jumper Comp. It's heavily inspired by a bike that Billow Bikes built. Shout out to him. Thanks for the inspiration. I'm very excited. So let's go. Okay then, let's kick things off with a custom wheel wheel. I'm using a set of 1995 Shimano DRLX hubs that I'm going to combine with halo rims and spokes. I always like to mark the valve hole as well as the first spoke to give me some orientation during the build. There are two different lengths required for the drive side and the non-drive side. So I keep my drive side spokes on the right and the non-drive side spokes on the left. Once I'm done with one side, I flip the wheel over and insert the spokes on the other side, just one hole to the right. As you can see, I only loosely tighten the nipples. We're gonna worry about the appropriate spoke tension much later. Moving on to the third set of spokes. These are being dropped in from the inside towards the outside on the drive side. We're building a triple crossed wheel here, which is fairly standard, I would say. So we go over the first two spokes and then underneath the third, skip one hole and insert the spoke there. And then we repeat that same process on the other side. Up until this point, I haven't used any lubricants. There are different ways of going about this. Some like to uh, apply some oil to the threads of the spokes before screwing in the nipples. But we are gonna do that just before we start truing the wheel. It's just a bit less messy that way. I have selected this pink set of quick release skewers. I think they're a great match for the pink accents on the frame or I guess purple, according to Specialized. I apply one drop of oil to the top of each nipple. It then seeps into the threads as well as uh, down uh, the sides of the nipples. That way, when we turn the nipples to increase spoke tension, there is less friction. Then just give it a good spin so the oil gets pushed out. Once the wheel is true, it's time for a rim tape and some tires. Like I said, this build is going to rely mostly on black components. So the obvious choice are some Maxxis DTH in their black version, because they also come with yellow decals, which again, great match for the frame, right? Or branding, I should say. When mounting your tire, make sure not to get your clothes stuck in it. Calvin Klein underwear, not a sponsor. The new parts that are used on this build that can also be found in our shop are linked in the video description. Now you can also just scan the QR code and it'll take you straight to our shop. 
both tires done, but the rear wheel obviously still needs a cassette. I went for a new Shimano cassette, also in black. These 2.3 inch tires are a tight fit. Uh, let's just say once the wheel is out of true, I will definitely notice right away. I have about two millimeters to each side in the rear. A bit more of a relaxed fit in the front. This bike is not for sale. I'm keeping this one for myself. In the recent uh, Kendale video, I mentioned my uh, lifetime bike bucket list. Well, this dump jumper frame has also been on that list ever since I first saw pictures of one. So uh, yeah, not gonna part ways with it. But if you're also interested in your own specialized custom build, just go on over to our Instagram and check out the build to order story highlights for all available bikes and frames. And if you see something that you like, send us a message and we can talk about a custom build for you. Now for the crank set, I'm combining a Shimano LX crank arm with a new Gephardt chain ring. And they will be joined together with oil slick crank bolts. Now this next part might be a bit controversial and I can already see people taking out the pitchforks in the comment section because they believe that everything should be left alone and kept original and you know I understand where you're coming from and I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, I just believe that the most important aspect is that you should do to your bike whatever it is that makes you happy. And the most important thing is that these bikes don't sit in a basement or a garage. They should be ridden. So whatever it is that you need to do to make you feel happy with your bike, go and do it. Your bike, your rules, right? And yeah, I find that nail polish is a super cheap and easy way to touch up shiny, glossy black components. Essie Nail Polish, not a sponsor. The reason I chose oil slick accents is because with pink, yellow and blue, they combine the three colors that are also used in the stump jumper decals. So if there ever is a bike that needs to have oil slick components, it's gotta be this one. Now to fit this BMX stem, we need a quill stem adapter. Unfortunately, this particular adapter is one inch to one inch, so the stem doesn't fit. But not to worry, we're just gonna use another adapter to adapt the adapter. adapter. I think BMX stems should sit as low as possible over the headset. I mean, you typically combine them with BMX bars, which are super high, right? Uh, so there's no need to have them sitting high on the stem. But since we have this adapter underneath, we kind of have a minimum height that we need to have it sitting at. So just need to cut it then. 
shouldn't take long. Now I'm obviously just marking the height. Uh, I like to use a pipe cutter rather than a saw. Just find easier, more convenient. This is the reason I like to wear hoodies while building. Those kangaroo pouches come in quite handy. to custom order this top cap from the UK. <laughs> I think it's well worth it. Unfortunately, they're not being sold in Europe. But uh, Bentley components, if you're watching, maybe we can work something out. I modified these van grips with the inner lock ring from a different set of grips, so they would have uh, an oil slick accent as well. As you may have noticed, all the non-oil slick components are all black with white labeling. After installing the front brakes, I noticed that I also had black nuts for the brake attachments. So naturally I went back to the front and replaced those. I guess because I pay way too much attention to those little details.
Yeah, that seems a bit too long still. Need to shorten this a little bit, but I'll be quick about it. I customized this Alex derailleur with a pink jockey wheel that I took off another bike some time ago. Yeah, so I explained this in a video before, but what I always do is have the shifter in the highest gear, then manually push the derailleur towards the third cog, so the chain sits on it, and then I make the cable nice and taut, and from there the cable tension is usually pretty spot on or just requires minor adjustments. turning these into some Ottoncino handlebars. Rather than advertising a random bike shop, I'd rather advertise psychopunks. And of course, in all my obsession with turbo saddles. The one bike that originally came with a turbo saddle, I don't put one on. <laughs> 